The Iowa Farm Bureau is proud to present this amazing state tournament and celebrate the accomplishments of Iowa's student athletes. To the Iowa Farm Bureau, this is more than just a sport. It's hometown pride, it's hopes and dreams, it's our future leaders, it's a reason to do more and be more. And it's that farm strong spirit that can only be found in Iowa. Congratulations to the student athletes and coaches on a successful year. And remember, today's successes are just the beginning of tomorrow's achievements. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big balls, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. That old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, when you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are sight. Let's go! At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Um, um, Frank, Frank, when you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunkissed Orange, is it true fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. Good afternoon and welcome to Wells Fargo Arena in beautiful Des Moines, Iowa, home of the Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau alongside Daniel Versteg. I'm Andy Pollock, and in just a moment, we'll have the matchup between the Clear Creek Amanda Clippers and the North Polk Comets right here on the Girls Union Network powered by Mid-American Energy Company. Hello, everybody. Like I said, I'm Andy Pollock. This is Daniel Versteg. And Daniel, we've got a matchup this afternoon, two teams that are quite familiar with each other yeah. when it comes to playing at this level. Yeah, Clear Creek Amanda and North Polk, uh, quarterfinal opponents last year. And Clear Creek Amanda very devastated. They didn't make it further than they uh, anticipated they would. They're the number one seed now and uh, trying to make a deeper run, much like North Polk has done the last few years. They've been in the state title game a number of times, just haven't been able to get the championship. Clear Creek Amanda with a very impressive win in their quarterfinal matchup. Let's take a look at how these teams got here right now as we take a look at their road to the state tournament. As we look at, first of all, the North Polk Comets, first of all, 23-2. and They beat DCG in a, a matchup of two teams that knew each other very yes. well, 48-42 in that first uh, quarterfinal matchup. They outscored DCG off turnover, 16-7, to and that proved to be a huge difference in that ball game. And they're a very balanced team. Becca Agard, 13 points, 9 rebounds, and a bunch of block shots. Abby Tuttle, future Northern Iowa Panther, 13 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists. Clear Creek of Mana, they had a blowout over Gilbert. In fact, it was in the paint, up and down the floor, assisting Ava Locklear with just an incredible one of the games that we will talk about for a long time here at the Girls State Basketball Tournament. In fact, we had stats people scrambling to find out if there had ever been a triple-double here before. 14 points, 17 rebounds, 9 assists. And oh, yeah, she also had 5 steals and a few blocks. So uh, Avery Lauer came in with 17 points as well, and she can shoot the ball from anywhere. Clear, Clear Creek and at 24-0 right now on the season. So we're looking forward to this one. Uh, when we come back, we'll dive deeper into today's matchup with our Seeds for Success presented by Channel Seeds. Plus, we'll have your starting lineups as we get set for tip-off. You're watching the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls' Union Digital Network, powered by Mid-American Energy.
This is our son, Sebastian. In 2021, he took half a pill he didn't know was counterfeit. That tiny pill contained enough fentanyl to kill him almost instantly. Kids buy them on social media and share them with their friends, not realizing how dangerous they are. Please talk to your kids about not taking anything that's not directly prescribed to them. Our child will never get to grow up, but we want yours to be able to. In Iowa, we all play by the same rules. Hard work pays off, practice makes perfect, success is something you earn, and teamwork helps us all be winners. The Iowa Pork Producers Association is proud to support statewide high school athletics. Because on our team and on yours, what we bring to the table is what brings us all together. Learn more about our commitment to Iowa at iowapork.org. When you choose Delta Dental of Iowa, you set a chain of good in motion because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you get more than great dental and vision insurance. You make a difference for others. Choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. And welcome back once again to Wells Fargo Arena here in Des Moines on what is a beautiful Thursday afternoon in downtown. It's time now to take a look at our channel, Seeds for Success. Daniel Versteg, you've had it put together quite the scouting report on these two teams. Yeah, and we've been able to see what they've been doing down here in Des Moines. And for Clear Creek Amana, rebounding the basketball is huge. Uh, it, we talked about their points of the pain against Gilbert uh, earlier here in the tournament. Well, they were only able to do that because they rebounded so well. They out-rebounded the Tigers 41-23, to and you're going to do uh, some great things down here. So CCA has got to be able to continue to rebound the basketball. They've got the height for it. They need to be uh, doing that, obviously, with Ava Locklear. She had 17 rebounds uh, against Gilbert. Meanwhile, for North Polk, got to get some outside shots to fall. They were able to outscore Dallas Center Grimes in points in the paint in the quarterfinals. That was fine. But their outside shots just, they couldn't get anything to go from the outside. They can shoot like they're used to. They come in averaging almost 60 points a game. If they can get some, those, those uh, outside shots to fall, that'll be huge. And both coaches mentioned this coming into the tournament. Defense and then run. You got to turn your defense into offense. They're both big on transition opportunities. Got to see uh, if, if these uh, two teams can turn this into a track meet potentially and uh, and run up the score in that regard. Couple teams with some very athletic gals on that. Thank you very much, Daniel Versteg. Today's Seeds for Success were brought to you by Channel. This enhanced Channel Seed brand is here to help farmers like you up your game and rise to the challenge. Learn more at Channel dot com slash rise abby tuttle for north polk uh, we've seen so many teams that get up and down the court abby tuttle the future you and i panther though is one of those players that in the half court has just been really good about creating opportunities not only for herself but for her teammates well, as well and that's another one of those players we talk about who needs to get some outside shots to fall so like you said she is so good in the half court she hits 43 and a half percent of her uh, outside opportunities from the perimeter, and that's that's a player that's got to get going. But like you said, she she distributes well for everybody else. That's a that's a player who you just look at right away, and you can tell, hey, yeah, she's going to go play Division One basketball somewhere and make an immediate difference. And for uh, for those of us around the area, it's good to have her in state at the University of Northern Iowa. On the other side, Ava Locke here for. The, the Clippers had just one of those games oh, that everybody's still been talking about <laughs> in that first round game, first round win. What I've been so impressed with is just the way she gets up and down the floor. And again, she does a great job creating opportunities for her teammates as well. Yeah, and, and like we talked about, rebounding the basketball. Those opportunities in the paint were created because Ava Locklear was being able to, number one, get the rebound. Number two, find another open girl to uh, to get a better look. Well, we'll take our final break before tip-off. When we come back, we'll have your team introductions and starting lineups for this tournament matchup. You're watching Girls State Basketball, presented by Iowa Farm Bureau, on the Girls Union Network, powered by Mid-American Energy. At Mid-American Energy, we're one company, serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. 
That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. The Comets, Clear Creek Command of the Clippers, set to go here with a date at the state championship game on the line. And that uh, second foray game will come your way right after this. But for now, let's go down to our public address announcer for tonight's introductions. Basketball semifinal matchup featuring the North Polk Comets and the Clear Creek Amana Clippers. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union promotes good sportsmanship by participants, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants, officials, and spectators in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, sexist, or abusive comments, or intimidating actions directed at officials, participants, coaches, team representatives, or event personnel will not be tolerated in our grounds for removal. We thank you for your cooperation and invite you to enjoy the game. Fans, it's now time to introduce the players in tonight's semifinal matchup. First and on starters for the North Polk Comets. Number two, Maddie Nemers. Number three, Jenna Manock. Number 11, Jocelyn Manock. Number 12, Ava Husak. Number 13, Maddie Simmons. Number 20, Lauren Osborne. Number 21, Aubrey Happ. Number 23, Faith Sullivan. Number 25, Amelia Groudon. And number 32, Kaylee Kadelka. The assistant coaches for North Polk are Alex Bullmeyer, Adam Bloom, and Karen Mathis. Now let's meet the non-starters for the Clear Creek Amana Clippers. Number three, Addie Campbell. Number four, Kira Rogers. Number 15, Lena Evans. Number 20, Melissa Sweeney. Number 23, Kennedy Stratton. Number 30, Alex Streg. Number 34, Lexi Moran. Number 42, Kelsey Leathers. The assistant coaches for Clear Creek Amana are Alex Schulte Johns, Declan Brogue, and Sean Patrick. And now, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for tonight's starting lineups? 
For North Polk at guard, a 5'9 freshman, number 14, Campbell Schultz. And for Clear Creek Amana at guard, a 5'4 senior, number one, Kaylee Stratton. For North Polk at guard, a 5'9 junior, number 22, Abby Tuttle. And for Clear Creek Amana at forward, a 5'11 sophomore, number 10, Avery Lauer. For North Polk at guard, a 5'7 junior, number 24, Jada Pody. And for Clear Creek Amana at forward, a 5'8 senior, number 11, Sam Strade. For North Polk at center, a 6'3 junior, number 33, Becca Agard. And for Clear Creek Amana at center, a 6'2 senior, number 44, Bliss Beck. For North Polk at guard, a 5'10 junior, number 40, Greta Dillinger. And for Clear Creek Amana at forward, a 5'11 senior, number 45, Ava Locklear. The head coach for North Polk is Clint Albertson, and the head coach for Clear Creek Amana is P.J. Sweeney. The floor officials for tonight's game are Blake Reinke, Brett Johnson, Kurt Strauth, and the bench official is Dan Deerland. Welcome North Polk and Clear Creek Amana to the 2024 Iowa Girls State Tournament. And before we begin today's game, we'd like to once again thank the Iowa Farm Bureau, proud title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union for their support. The Iowa Farm Bureau has an office located in each county across Iowa. Thank you, Iowa Farm Bureau, for supporting the IGHSAU and the Iowa Girls. So the tip-off set to go here between Clear Creek Amana, and it's going to be blessed back out there along with Becca Agard for North Polk. Watching these starting lineups happen and seeing it on the sheet, it's really the youth of North Polk yes. against the, the long-time experience of four senior starters for the Clippers. Yeah, Clear Creek Amana can, you know, have that, you know, experience to, to fall back on being here at State last year and hopefully it leads them to a championship game appearance this year. Clippers decked out in white, trimmed in blue. North Polk all red today with black and white accents. Starting things off, Stratton trying to run the offense against this trapping zone of North Polk and kerfuffle on the floor to get things started, a jump ball, so that uh, was short-lived possession for Clear Creek Amanda as the ball will go back to North Polk. Yeah, and you said it right there, that, that quick half-court trap. The ball is gonna go somewhere, and if there are two players around it, they're gonna collapse on it quickly, and that's, you know, Clear Creek Amanda's gotta keep the ball moving offensively. Jada Pody, who played outstanding in this quarterfinal win over Dallas Center Grimes for North Pole, kind of was the glue that held that team together. And then Tuttle has her shot blocked out of bounds by Scrag. But it, we see so many times in these state tournament games, everybody knows who the stars are, but it's that who's that next player that's going to step up. And the deeper you get into the tournament, that becomes a big deal. You can let your stars kind of show out in the quarterfinal maybe, but once you get down to this point, everybody knows who the stars are. It takes a supporting cast. It's a whole team to win here at the state tournament. Agard switches places with Tuttle, and as Tuttle tries to sneak it through, it goes out of bounds. Clear Creek Amana will get the turnover. Clear Creek Amanda, you see that man-to-man -man defense, but they, they pressure you with that defense a lot. Yeah, they're, they're up in your grill, and they don't give you time to breathe. If if you're breathing, they're, they're not on the floor at this point, so uh, that it's it's going to be a really fun defensive ball game on both ends of the floor. North Polk using their tallest player, 6'2", Becca Agard, at the top of the of that zone, and it pays off for them this time, looking to run Dillinger too far under the basket. And turns it back over with a steal from Beck. There's that transition we talked about at the top of the broadcast. Just got to keep it under control, and those will turn into points eventually. Lob pass over here on the side to Scrag. Not where you want to have the ball down in that corner right now. They will trap you right away. There's a good spot for it as Lockyer kicks it around. Agard is a great rim protector there and traveling there 
as Scrag got in trouble down going up against Agard. I misspoke. I short, short, uh, short sighted a little bit Agard there. Listed at 6'3", not 6'2", that I mentioned about her before. And that inch is a big deal there. Uh, that, that can really turn into a shot going in or a shot getting turned away. Campbell Schultz, who got the start in the quarterfinal game, wasn't even listed as one of the starters that we were given ahead of time, but ended up uh, with double-digit scoring in that game. Just a freshman for North Polk. And she will have an opportunity to score the first couple points of the game for North Polk as she does not play like a freshman. Very aggressive basketball player for the Comets. Coach Clint Albertson, they get that one to roll in right away for Schultz. Yeah, you better start learning the name Campbell Schultz. Obviously, North Polk has been here a ton of times. She's come up through the system. And now that she's a freshman getting a taste of the state tournament, I don't think she's going to want to give that up the next three years. Talked with Ellie Ruffridge, as we called the game before this one, and she talked about how a group of these North Polk gals, she got tweeted at today, a bunch of these North Polk gals were down watching her six or seven years ago at the state tournament. Now they are here today as that three-point shot, no good by Lauer, but just one of those stories at the state tournament, and you know, you watch those dreams come to fruition here. His long shot on the way, way short, but underneath is Bliss. Beck, he puts it up and in and ties this thing up. There's the rebounding we talked about. Clear Creek Amanda out rebounding Gilbert by 18 earlier in the tournament. They need to do it again today. That's a really good opportunity there uh, to get some second chance points and tie the game. Hody down in front of the Clear Creek Amanda bench. She drives in, but maybe not a great look for her down low. Agard goes up with a nice left hand, but she can't get it to fall. One and done for North Polk. Clear Creek Amanda running immediately again, and Agard gets run into by Lauer, and Agard going to get whistled for the foul. Two shots for Lauer. Yeah, defending from behind is always a challenge, especially when you're trying to get in front of the defender. Agard just kind of get tangled up there with Lauer as she was uh, going up for the mid-range jumper. And we always talk about basketball being a, a team sport as it is. So I never like highlighting one matchup of two players. That kind of shorts the other eight on the floor. But I don't think there's any better post matchup here in this tournament than Becca Agard and Bliss Beck, two of the tallest players here at the state tournament, both with great footwork. It's going to be fun to watch how they uh, duel with each other. Agard, they use her a little bit differently than they use Beck defensively with Agard kind of at that top position in the zone. You ask her to cover a lot of ground as the strength of Abby Tuttle shows through there as the future UNI Panther goes up with the left hand. And you can see what Agar does. I mean, she just gets in the way of passing lanes, kind of gums up the offense from the top, whereas Bliss Beck, a, sh a rim protector, kind of, uh, you know, slows things down, down under the basket. 30-second timeout here, wanted by uh, Coach P.J. Sweeney for Clear Creek Amanda. And you notice they haven't been able to get up and down the floor like we knew they were going to try to just in the first three and a half minutes of this one. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If you're, if you're going to transition against a zone, you better do it within the first four or five seconds of the shot clock because otherwise it's too late. And then you've got to be really deliberate. Do I attack the high post? Can we can we go along the baseline? The thing about that, it's kind of a 3-2 zone versus the traditional 2-3, um, is that baseline's a little bit more open with Agard out of the high post. you got the opportunity to get underneath versus a normal 2-3 zone. She's just kind of sitting right in the middle under the basket and turning away shots from there. Well, and it's recognizing where those gaps are in the zone exactly. and, as well right away to take advantage of. And now it looks like maybe we've changed up the defense once again. North Pole coming out a little more man look right now mm -hmm. as Beck, or excuse me, Lockyer, the long fadeaway. Can't get it to fall. Tuttle gets the long rebound. Now North Polk looking to run a little bit, press the tempo. Tuttle off the screen. Hody. Schultz, they're trying to get over the top to Agar. She can't hang on to it. There was no help defense coming. If they can get that pass completed, Agar will have a good look. Yeah, credit Sam Scrag. She, she's given up a half a foot down there. And like you said, no help on the backside. She still fronts the post, makes that pass a little, just a touch more challenging and forces the turnover. I would imagine that's something that Coach P.J. Sweeney saw right away, and he's going to want to get that fixed. Yes. Again, there's a turnover. Campbell Schultz comes away with it, looking to run. Schultz has it tipped away from behind, and great effort great running down the floor by Sam Scrag again creating a hustle play. 
Lockyer all the way into the lane. Up, hangs in the air forever, but can't get it to fall. Agar pulls down the board. See the tempo change now. Tuttle goes one on three and can't get it to fall. And Agar going to get whistled for her second foul, and that's huge. And that's not one where you want to get it whistled about 85 feet away from the basket for Agar. Yeah, she knew it right away, too. She's really disappointed with herself. And um, to lose that post presence down low, and with Clear Creek Amana kind of having two post players in Locklear and back, uh, this could be the time for CCA to just say, hey, we are going to live down on the block, and uh, you got to figure out a way to stop us now. Over halfway through the first quarter, they go down low right away again and going to get a chance at the free throw line for Sam Scragg is really not even the post that they went to. They go down low, but you just don't have that post presence there. Exactly. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be Beck or Locklear. The cutting lanes that open up without Becca Agard on the floor are just like runways. I mean, it's it's it, it, the easiest thing to see, obviously, for us watching the game. Uh, but for the players who know what they're looking for, that is just a golden opportunity to get a, 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 hopefully a, a, a chance to score. Scrag misses a pair, and Pody grabs a rebound. That foul was whistled on Pody for Southeast Polk. Just her first. Polk has three, though, in this first quarter. New rules in Iowa high school basketball this year. If you're watching for the first time, it's they now count up team fouls by quarter. So five is when you go to the double bonus. And no more one and ones in yeah. Iowa high school basketball, which I've been told is speeding up the games. I didn't know the game needed speeding up, but <laughs> that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. Schultz. Kind of miss the one and ones, though. I, I'd, I'd like to see it incorporated in some way. I'm not sure what's best, but. Cody, the catch and shoot. It's the first three-pointer of the day for North Pole. That's something they need to see a little bit more of. They haven't really had an opportunity yet in the first quarter, but if they can get a few more to fall, they'll be in, in good spot. And trying to match her from the other side, and doing so is Avery Lauer for the Clippers. Tied up here with under two and a half minutes to go. Look at that move by Tuttle, and she'll go to the free throw line. I mean, that is such a quick move. Not only is her first step quick, if she gets beat on that first step, the spin move, she puts that defender on her hip and on her backside so quick just with a, a, a simple spin move. It's nothing flashy, nothing, you know, game-changing by any means, but it, it, it is definitely uh, a difference maker. I was working with Joanna Settles calling North Polk's win over Dallas Center Grimes, and she described the way she described everything that Tuttle does was almost like a gymnastics routine yeah. as she described everything that she was going through as you saw a great replay there that spin move that you talked about from Tuttle as she hits a pair and North Polk is taking the lead back yeah it's a very deliberate move which you know if you're a gymnastics uh, if you're a gymnast that's you know you got to be deliberate with your movement it's, it's almost a routine that Absolutely. she has now North Polk has extended this defense a little bit more again they've got Dillinger playing that a guard spot in the zone and Traveling with the basketball is Lockyer. Ball got tipped just as it got to her. She couldn't get a good solid handle on it. Yeah, the, the juggle kind of uh, messed her up there. Just kind of threw off the timing a little bit of the cut. You could see her. She wanted to flash high and then go low and um, just couldn't, couldn't quite dial in the pass. Tuttle. She will look to get to the basket any opportunity that she can. Pody who hit the big three a minute ago, and then they get it to Kadelka. Gets her own rebound but can't capitalize. Lockyer clears it for Clear Creek Amana. Lockyer all the way down. This is where she was so good in the quarterfinals. Puts it in once again, getting to the basket. Ava Locklear. Yeah, she needs to have a big game for Clear Creek Amano. You, you get, get off to a good start in the quarterfinals. Do you get the first shot here to fall in the semifinals, get the ball rolling? Then Tuttle goes up against a much taller Bliss Beck. And Beck gets the better of her there. Dillinger will take the ball out of bounds if that name is sounds familiar that Dillinger name is synonymous with a different sport softball here in central Iowa <laughs> as her grandpa longtime coach North Polk and assistant at Iowa Dillinger's been very very strong in the softball community as that ball is tipped out of bounds off of Lena Evans she looked a little confused yeah well, and, and Dillinger reached down to pick up the basketball and evidently she did miss touching it um, and the official saw it and, you know, made, made the call. 
North Polk the five seed. Clear Creek Amanda, the number one team in the state. 24-0 on the season are the Clippers. Tuttle drives in, and what English on the basketball to get it in. Made it a layup from not layup distance. Yeah, those are, those are the things that separate good players from great players, one knowing different kind of shot. Lockyer bullies her way in, and man, what a soft touch from Ava Locklear. Yeah, that's, that's a fun battle, too. I mean, Ava Locklear is, is, like you said, had a game of her life earlier here in the state quarterfinals and getting off to a really good start here. I love the strength that she can go into the oh, lane man. with and then just a soft touch that she showed on that particular play. There's about a seven second differential in the shot clock and game clock right now as Pody dribbles it out. Looking to take it in at Locklear. They can't get the ball to Tuttle. It appears that's what they want to do. Dillinger with three seconds, tosses it up towards the rim, can't get it to fall, and it's all Clippers around the basket. May have been a travel, half-court shot on the way. Good if it goes, and it does not. And there's still a half a second to go on the clock. And North Polk, if they can get a long pass off, they can turn and chuck it up there, see, see what happens maybe. Or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> That's all right. We'll call it there. That is the end of the first quarter. North Pole, Clear Creek, Amanda, all tied up at 11 here with a trip to the state championship game on the line here on the IGHS AU Digital Network. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big ballers, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small. We host them all. That old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! Level up your game at Central College. More than half of Central students participate in intercollegiate athletics because Central allows you to pursue your passions and be more than a spectator. It's the best decision ever. Apply at central.edu. Andy Pollock, Daniel Versteg in a tie ball game between North Polk and Clear Creek Amanda after the first quarter. Neither team able to really go on much of a run. Almost sort of a feeling out process between these two teams. Yeah, because it started with, all right, we're going to work it inside. we got a few baskets. All right, now we're going to step back, get the outside shot to fall. It really has been just kind of a testing of the waters, seeing how it feels, and then, all right, now we know what we can go after. Becca Agard back in the game right now with two fouls for North Polk, and she backs away from Locklear immediately as she drives in. Now Locklear matched up in the middle, the little fadeaway too strong. And Pody grabs the rebound. Pody looking to run. Leaves it for Tuttle. Back in the corner, Pody, and we know she will pop that three. They get over the top to Agar. She loves to go to that left hand. Way too strong that time. Might have got knocked out of her hand momentarily. And now Clear, Clear Creek Amanda quickly back the other way. Might turn into a mouthful to say several times today. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for Clear Creek Amanda here to attack the post even harder. We talked about how important it is to attack it with Becca Agard on the bench. It's even more important now that she's out there. Dare her to, to try and contest your shot. Dare her to potentially pick up her third foul. Driving in and Cody had a hand on it, but great strength by Avery Lauer to put it up off the glass and in. And that's a tough take, like, like you said. The defender right there, Pody got her hand on the shot and to muscle it in with contact. I mean, just look at how tough this shot is. The angle and the finish, really good job by Lauer. Three-point play there for Lauer gives Clear Creek Amanda the three-point lead just into this second quarter. They isolate things for Schultz. She has it tipped away and a foul going to be whistled on Kennedy Stratton. They kind of isolated her, the freshman. We haven't seen that much from North Polk, but got her over here on the left side and 
left her one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that's what makes Campbell Schultz scary here in the next three years. She can see that, recognize it, and know, hey, I need to, need to get downhill, need to get to the cup, and, and take advantage of my strength, which is speed and the ability to uh, you know, beat a defender off the dribble. Schultz averages 7.2 points per game this year. Very good at the free throw line as she hits a pair and has it back down to a one-point game. What that does is allows North Polk to set up their trapping defense right. right now as well. Keeps Clear Creek Amana out of transition. Is basically turns it into transition, though, as Stratton goes into the lane. Turns it over this time. Dillinger looking to run up with the left hand. Blocked out of there by Lena Evans. We talked about getting out and run in the sense of turning it into offense. But getting up and run and playing transition defense in this game is, is so crucial with teams that like to run the floor. And the ball tipped <laughs> out of there. Locklear got a hit in the back of the head after Beck hit it. Corner three on the way. No good. Beck with a rebound. Second chance opportunity. Not going to deny her two times for Evans. And Bliss Beck knew she was close on the first one. If I give her a second opportunity, I think we'll be rewarded well. Clippers with a fast start in this second quarter. Schultz isolated once again. What a move by Campbell Schultz as she goes to the left hand. That, that's an unguardable shot. I mean, she gets it to her outside hand. She spins toward the baseline, and there's nothing you can do for it. North Polk hustles back on defense, forces a turnover after the long pass over the top to Lauer, forces her to travel with a basketball. We've got another IMT Insurance substitution brought to you by IMT Insurance. Learn how you can be worry-free with IMT at imtins.com. Tuttle. You can see this is what they're trying to do right now as Schultz goes up again. Can't get it to fall that time as Schultz goes through contact. Lauer clears it for the Clippers. Time looks like Stratton wants to take it in. She does. What a play by Stratton, but she can't get it to fall. Agard makes her presence known with a rebound. Tuttle nearly sniped by Evans. Agar wants no part of that three-point shot. <laughs> Schultz again spots up for three. <laughs> wow. She's heating up. And she's playing with a ton of confidence right now. And as a freshman here at the state tournament, man, that's a that's a great quality. A little floater in the lane by Stratton, no good. And Dillinger clears the board. Polk looking to run again, but Schultz can't quite hang on to it. Agar fouled by Locklear. And Locklear just turned to her teammates and said, we have to go. We have to, you know, we have to run back. North Polk's seeing a weakness. And they're exploiting it right now by getting down down floor, and I love, like I said, the confidence Campbell Schultz is playing with, her speed, her athleticism to get behind defenders. Yeah, and that just screams confidence, that three-point shot. On the inbounds play, up with a shot, no good. I couldn't see who it was, a Schultz on the far side. And on the rebound, we've got a held ball. It will stay with North Polk. Kaylee Kadelka checks into the game for the Comets. She has started on and off throughout the course of the season. Another one of those experienced players, a senior for North Polk, the only senior on the team. There's that spin move once again for Tuttle, but man, she's got to go up against the taller Bliss Beck, and Beck knocks it away. Here's Clear Creek Amanda at their best. Evans lays it in. Got a fast break is working for both teams now. They're starting to you know get their legs under them and turning this into a track meet like we talked about right, right off the top. Seen several teams today throughout the classes we've covered that love to run, Esterville, Lincoln Central. Yep. That's gonna be a track meet tomorrow night oh, in man. that 3A state <laughs> championship game as Agar down low, can't finish. Pody for three. And Beck gets the rebound, but yeah, watch them go and uh, just, <laughs> these teams love to get up and down oh, the floor. Yeah. Solon especially. Their state track championship speed. Whoa, not quite able to finish his lock clear. I thought that one was going to go, but yeah, like you said, I mean, that, that just makes for a fun brand of basketball. And I'm sure all our viewers can agree, watching this state tournament is a whole heck of a lot of fun when you've got speed and athleticism on the court, which we seem to have every game. The winner of this game will take on the winner of Waverly, Shell Rock, and Healy. 
So will that uh, to figure out who will play later on uh, tomorrow night in that state, or excuse me, Saturday, Saturday afternoon in the state championship game for Class 4A. Those teams will tip off after this. Scheduled for 645. As Locklear uses the old penny machine at the Walmart, <laughs> spins that one into the basket. Just as satisfying as those penny machines, too. I got the head shake from our producer director, Randy. <laughs> That's how you know it was a good one. It landed when he shakes his head. Dillinger gets it inside and a nice finish. Both these teams cut without the ball so well. I mean, they, they just know where a weak spot is. They know how to get open for a pass, and they get rewarded with easy buckets. Well, and that's another freshman in the game for North Polk, Faith Sullivan. She's in there to try to defend the much taller Bliss Beck right now, and Beck gets the best of her. She'll go to the free throw line, but... We saw Sullivan come in and get some great minutes in their quarterfinal win as well. And, man, the future is so bright for this North Polk Comets team. Not like North Polk was an unknown before this year, but they're definitely going to be unknown this year. They're going to be unknown next year. And, yeah, I, I uh, think I'd probably have an early favorite here for 2025 in Class 4A. Well, in North Polk, they did not shy off in their schedule at all about who no. they played. I, oh, man. Watched them play Centennial earlier this year, a state tournament team in Class 5A. And then, of course, early in the season, the first game of the year, they lost to Dallas Center Grimes, but got the best of the Mustangs here in the quarterfinals. So Clear Creek Amana by one right now. They're undefeated, so we can't talk about any of their losses at all. <laughs> and they scheduled tough, too. Uh, North Lynn, the Iowa City Public Schools, uh, Indian Hola, they, they played some pretty tough teams. Schultz is into double digits with that layup. And immediately down is Stratton, and Stratton goes right back at the freshman and lays it in. And we're seeing something, you know, Kaylee Stratton doesn't score a whole lot. She's mainly a facilitator offensively. She keeps them on time, but she's having a good good day getting to the hoop. Schultz again. <laughs> what a game. I, I mean, this is, this is going to be fun all the way to the finish here. Back and forth these teams go, trying to get the ball all the way over in a battle down low. Kadelka. Tips the ball out of bounds. It will stay with CCA. And who else? Stratton. She can't quite get it to fall. Schultz gets almost picked up from behind. And Tuttle has been quiet, and you know that she can go off at any given point, so you just kind of hold your breath and wait. And the nice thing is she hasn't had to go off because look who's got the ball again. She's, had, she's got 13 points already. Sullivan, she drives in and loses a basketball. No travel call as she bobbled it. Then the ball was tipped out of bounds mm -hmm. off Stratton, so a lot of action down there for the ball just to remain with North Polk. The official wants to talk right now. They want to discuss if the... The shot clock as it still sits at 35. Yeah, I think it, it reset because they anticipated, a, I think, a change of possession there. So I think they're going to have to get it back to where it was prior to uh, that deflected ball. As I'm not sure what the mechanics of the officiating is right now as oh, they're trying to figure that out. Got it down to 11. Somehow they came up with 11 seconds to move it on to. Coach Albertson wants a timeout right now for North Polk. And, Really, they got to be really happy with how things are going right now for the Comets. Yeah, oh yeah, they're they're getting a lot of what they want to do. I mean, they're they're shooting from the outside. You can see both teams have not taken as many shots from the outside as you might anticipate, but they're hitting them at a good rate. They're being very selective. They're being picky, which is good. And then you take that, you take the threat of their outside shots and their quickness and athleticism to get downhill to the hoop and get open opportunities. And you've got a very well-rounded offense that uh, is is just firing right now. Forcing Clear Creek Amanda to play much more in the half-court game. And it's not that Clear Creek Amanda can't do that, but right now just taking them a little bit more out of their game. We've seen them at their best when they're able to get in transition. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Clear Creek Amanda, North Polk has thrown a couple of different defenses. We saw them in zone, in man, and, and CCA is just, you know, trying to figure each out and, and – you know, they, they still are doing okay, but don't quite have the 
exact thing that's going to work for him. Ball taken away there on the turnover by Scrag. And Stratton, who you mentioned, is kind of had to become a scorer here for the Clippers. Up top, Beck. Stratton again. They've liked her trying to penetrate. Beck. Beck handles the ball very well. Boy, look at Faith Sullivan forcing the issue there. Tuttle all the way in up off the glass and in. And Tuttle will get the points, but Faith Sullivan needs some kind of recognition there. She is a freshman going up against a six foot two senior in Bliss Beck and making her life a living nightmare right now. Right now, Sullivan, you notice how low she stays right now. She's guarding Beck until she catches a basketball. Spin move in there, Sullivan goes for the steal and a travel call, just being very disruptive. Scrag didn't know it was coming. She's guarding a player who's a few inches taller than her, and then she comes in in help and is just a pest. I mean, there's no, <laughs> that, that's a compliment on the defensive end, and man, what a, what a showing by you know a couple of freshmen. Campbell Schultz in the offensive end, Faith Sullivan on the defensive end. Lauren Osborne into the game for North Polk as Tuttle looks things over. She's gonna let loose a long three-point shot, no good, and Osborne quickly gets the rebound. She goes up with a left-handed layup and in. North Polk has opened up a five-point lead here late in the first half. Lauer with Clear Creek Amanda trying to figure out something in the half court. They've really struggled this half court set. There's one way to do it. Over the top they go, but the weak side block coming from Sullivan, and then the shot made by Locklear goes in, and she'll have an opportunity to convert a three-point play. And that's a huge offensive rebound. Right place, right time. You, you see again Faith Sullivan in the help side defense there. What, but what a recovery by Locklear, saving uh, you know another big stop from North Pole. And how about the presence of mind of Bliss Beck? As soon as she got that rebound, no way she was gonna be able to score under the basket. Yeah. Quick kicks it out to Locklear, and that was one thing I had in my notes from the couple games I've seen this year. The interior passing of those two is so good. Well, and you have two weapons like that on each side of the block. You, you've got to be able to pass because you're not always going to be able to score, and your teammate will, and you got to keep your head up. Locklear is now up to eight points, the future Saginaw basketball player from Michigan. And now North Polk will hold for one. They'll be perfectly content with a two-point lead here. Trying to pull the upset over the number one seed in the state, Clear Creek Amana. And Clear Creek Amana is probably saying, hey, we don't want to blow this. I know their, their volleyball season came to kind of a, an early end in the state semifinals after an undefeated year. They just got to calm down and, and play their game of basketball like they know how to play. Starts here on the defensive end, 10 seconds to go as Schultz, oh, nice pass inside and taken away though. Kadelka turned it over. Here it comes the other way, Lauer all the way down and can't quite get it to fall. A chance for Clear Creek Amanda to tie it up going in. Couldn't quite get the layup to fall. And that's where those shots have always fallen yes. for the Clippers. Yeah, and it was another transition opportunity. They defended well, they did everything right. Just couldn't get the shot to go through the hoop. It is time now to take a break before we have our halftime show. A great one right now. North Polk, the five seed, trying to pull the upset over the number one team in the state, Clear Creek Amana. We'll be back with more of our halftime show after this on the IGHSAU Digital Network. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.
Something exciting is growing on Iowa farms these days. Innovation. From tractors that seed, weed, and harvest with data-driven precision, to drones that scout or plant cover crops to protect soil and water. Even our animals live in smart homes with round-the-clock care. Technology keeps your food safer, water cleaner, and makes us more sustainable. Because what we do here benefits everyone here. Life on the farm makes everyone's life better. Looking at the Bishop Garrigan dance team here at halftime. They always do such a great job of showcasing all the talents of the Iowa girl here at the state basketball tournament. We've watched dance teams uh, come in and out of this place all week long. As we're already to Thursday, this week has flown by oh, right man. now. Yeah. We've only got a couple of slots left to fill in championship games before this winter sports season is over for the IGHSAU. It included the state wrestling tournament here just a couple weeks ago that we were also on the call for here on the digital network, but uh, in this game right now, North Pole trying to pull the upset over to Clear Creek Amana, leading 28-26 at halftime. And you know some of your keys to the game, Daniel Versteg, have really come to fruition throughout that first half. Yeah, North Polk was able to kind of settle in from the outside, get a few shots to fall, not as many as maybe they would like, but you know they they haven't needed as many three-point shots to fall. Uh, both teams have been running up and down the floor, and that was the both coaches pretty much said verbatim the same thing as each other a defend and run and transition turn defense into offense and we're seeing that as this game goes along their ability to make a steal turn it into a five six second possession and and get a basket out of it and it's it's provided a, a very entertaining first half so far we'll dive a little bit deeper into more of those halftime statistics statistics when we come back but now we'd like to take a moment once again to thank our title sponsor the iowa farm bureau for their support of the state basketball tournament earlier this week the IGHSAU had the opportunity to speak with the iowa farm bureau president brent johnson Learn more about Iowa Farm Bureau's support of the IGHSAU and student athletes across the state. Thanks for joining us for the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament. I'm Matt Hominoff with the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. We want to thank all of our partners for all the great support we get from around the state. None more important than our proud title sponsor, Iowa Farm Bureau. With me today is the president of the Iowa Farm Bureau, Brent Johnson. Thanks for joining us, Brent. Yep. Why does the Iowa Farm Bureau feel so strongly about supporting the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and our tournament games? Well, Matt, the Iowa Farm Bureau has been the title sponsor for the Girls Union now for 19 years. And once again, very proud to be a part of this year's state girls basketball tournament. And, you know, this tournament highlights the work ethic, teamwork, resilience and dedication that these girls have contributed for a year's worth of dedication to their craft. And just like that same spirit, the Iowa farmers are the best in what they do across this entire country, not only in production, but also in conservation. And you put all that together and there's a lot here to celebrate. Yeah. Your support for the IGHSAU goes beyond youth and education. What other support does the Iowa Farm Bureau provide Iowa's youth? Yeah. Well, Matt, here at Farm Bureau, we believe that today's youth is tomorrow's leaders, and we're proud to support them in many different ways. One of those is by our scholarship program. Every single year, we give nearly a half a million dollars across the entire state to those kids so that they can continue their education at a higher level. We've also partnered with the Girls Union and the Boys Association now for several years to offer concussion insurance for those student athletes who compete in sanctioned sports across the entire state so that they can do so at a high level and feel safe doing so. And, and that is at no cost to that student or their families. Third, to, we've given teachers across the state nearly a half a million dollars so that they can properly equip their classrooms to do their jobs better. And most recently, just last year, 
the Iowa Farm Bureau gave the Iowa FFA Foundation a million dollars so that they can properly place ag teachers and ensure that students across the state have an exposure to agriculture and how it affects their lives every day. Yeah, so the students participating in this year's tournament are taking home some pretty neat souvenirs. But one new item that they're taking home are the championship ball caps. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely. You know, the the girls who are competing at this year's tournament are actually taking home quite a bit of swag this year. Of course, we have the bag tags and the signature basketballs that the girls have been used to seeing over the years. But this year, we've added a championship ball cap so that those girls who actually win the tournament have an extra souvenir to remember that if they put their minds to it, they can accomplish anything. Well, thanks again, Brent, for both your and everyone at Iowa Farm Bureau's support of the Iowa Girl over the years. In Iowa, we grow corn. A lot of corn. Corn is what supports us. It feeds our livestock, it fuels our vehicles, empowers our state, it nourishes our families. A cash crop? Yeah, but it's way more than that. Corn sustains us. It's who we are. Without it, we'd just be... Well, you get the picture. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. The thing I love about Clark is that you're never just one thing. I'm not just a student. I'm a future doctor. I'm an athlete on a history-making team. I'm a community member supporting the causes I care about. I'm a friend, a neighbor, a leader. At Clark, you can become anything. What will you be? Be you at CU. Fans official state tournament merchandise is now available online. Time to get your smartphones out. Give you a moment to do that. You're all just pulling them out of your pockets right now. <laughs> just scan the QR code on your screen now or visit IGHSAU.org to browse and customize your merchandise to match your style. We don't have the camera on us right now, but we've got some great uh, IGHSAU Farm Bureau State Champion pink hats that they will be lucky if these are still remaining on the table when I walk away tonight. This is my last game at the state tournament. It's certainly been a pleasure really? working again oh, this year. I've got to go to a football clinic tomorrow that I'll oh, be at all day yes, long. So yes. I've got to go do that other part of my job. But this has certainly <laughs> been a blast this year. Time to take a look at some of our halftime stats here as we check things out and we we talked about rebounding being a key and actually uh, North Polk has done a really good job of that. Yeah, they're they're getting the opportunities as far as shutting down a possession and then, you know, keeping their possessions al alive, but if you look further down the list, it's actually Clear Creek Amana who's done a better job with their offensive rebounds. They've got more second chance points on fewer O boards. So, kind of what we were alluding to with rebounding for Clear Creek Amana is getting the second chance opportunities. They've certainly done that with nine of their 26 uh, coming off the offensive glass. Each team has had uh, several opportunities at the free throw line, but check out North Polk, what they've been able to do so far. Six for six from the line for the Comets, and Clear Creek Amana six for ten. Combined to the two right now in a two-point game, those free throws could end up being huge as this game goes on. Yeah, and uh, Clear Creek Amanda, I want to say those free throws came pretty early. I think they went one of their first four, somewhere around there. And, um, you know, seeing those go down early is a lot more beneficial than, you know, seeing them go down late, uh, if, if you understand what I mean. You need, need the confidence. And like we've talked about, North Polk's playing with a ton. Clear Creek Amanda, if they can settle down, get, get those opportunities again to come their way at the line, settle in, make them, they'll be in a good spot the rest of the game. Clear Creek Mana has uh, done a pretty good job. They're a team that really thrives in the paint, but North Polk has really done a nice job handling things there as well. We'll take one more break and be back with the second half. If it's anything like the first, it should be a great one. 28-26, North Polk leading Clear Creek Mana. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. 
MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. The Iowa Farm Bureau is proud to present this amazing state tournament and celebrate the accomplishments of Iowa's student athletes. To the Iowa Farm Bureau, this is more than just a sport. It's hometown pride, it's hopes and dreams, it's our future leaders, it's a reason to do more and be more. And it's that farm strong spirit that can only be found in Iowa. Congratulations to the student athletes and coaches on a successful year. And remember, today's successes are just the beginning of tomorrow's achievements. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company. Getting set to start the second half as you hear the North Polk fight song in the background. Love to have the uh, pep bands here at the state tournament. We had a incredible pep band, some Van Halen being played by the guitarist just shredding it from Montezuma yesterday. He went viral online on Twitter if you want to look that up. Uh, just incredible. Wow, that was awesome to watch yesterday. But Daniel Versteg, as we, as we come out here, what's it going to take for Clear Creek Amanda to really get running what they want to be able to run? Well, I think it's, you know, I hope this is what a lot of the discussion was at halftime. Whatever North Polk throws at you, whether it's a man, a zone, you got to be comfortable in the half court. You can't be really comfortable in transition unless you're comfortable in the half court. It's just seeing what they're throwing at you, and then hopefully at halftime they devised a plan, say this is how we got to attack it so that we can, uh, you know, get some points on the board again. It's It's been a little while since CCA's been confident scoring the basketball in the half court. they got to have that here in the second half. Good cut down low. There's one way to do it. Locklear right away on the cut. Great recognition on the assist. And Clear Creek Amana has tied it up. And that, I'm sure, was one of the first things they talked about in, in, in the locker room. Get it down low, find a high post cutter, and uh, she'll be wide open for an opportunity. Pody swings it over to Tuttle. And again, just haven't heard a whole lot from Tuttle, but haven't needed to so far. Pody down in the corner. Dillinger will shoot that. That's blocked that time. But the freshman Schultz comes up with a rebound once more. Five seconds on the shot clock for Pody. Down the corner, they left Tuttle open and she couldn't get it to fall. Rebound comes out to Scrag. Stratton, who was a little more aggressive with the basketball than we expected to see in the first half. And that was kind of a difference there for Clear Creek Command. They'd be down about four or five more points if it wasn't for Stratton attacking the rack. They've tried to figure out a way to get the ball down into that corner as a three-point shot comes from Lauer. But you can see that's been the emphasis to start. Both possessions have run through that far corner. Well, Beck can just kind of watch the entire offense around her. She can see a cutter middle of the lane. She can see an open shooter across court. And, and she's so tall, she can get the pass over everyone, too. Dillinger strong on that shot. Another rebound out there to Scrag. Scrag seems to be wherever that basketball is. There's Scrag. She gets the assist. No, can't quite do it. Ball slipped out of Lauer's hands. I think she was more open and less contested than she thought she'd be. Tuttle. The Euro step, but can't get it to fall. Haven't seen a whole lot of ladies use that step here as we have so much throughout the regular season. Down in the corner, Stratton for three. Coach Albertson wants a timeout and I can't envision a better scenario for CCA to get things rolling in this third quarter. I mean, they just threw a haymaker to North Polk. 8-0 run, uh, Clear Creek Cabana is doing what they want to offensively. The, they started off setting things up in the half court. Okay, what do we need to do? We're going to get it down to the short corner along the baseline. We're going to find somebody else open because Bliss Beck, we've seen, she demands a double team. That leaves somebody else open. She's got incredible vision. She can pass it over the top of any defense and find an open player. And then once they were settled down in the half court, boom, you see this three in transition. They quickly got down floor and Stratton, just cool as a cucumber, knocks down the outside shot. Credit to CCA right now for doing some things maybe they didn't want to have to do in this game and be a little bit more deliberate in their offensive game plan. Good adjustments there at halftime by P.J. Sweeney. Let's see how North Pole counters it. Look at Bliss back out at the perimeter here, guarding the, the top of this 1-3-1. Uh, well, look, look at it, just how it makes those passes so difficult. This long passes gives that back half of the defense way more time to react and get in position. 
Clear Creek Amana moving much better right now defensively as Dillinger drives in. Floater too strong. The rebound comes out to the Clippers. Stratton looking to run. Back out Locklear. Draws some attention. The floater in the lane can't get that to fall. And I was blocked out. Was that Bliss back? back? Yes, all right. And she, she's having a great second half right now. She's distributing, rebounding. And, what I mean, this defense that she's playing right now, like you said, the passes are exponentially tougher with her at the top of the zone. North Polk has had to slow their tempo down a bunch right now on the offensive end. Swing it out to Tuttle. She's one that can change that. Goes up off the glass and in. Right now they're trying to pass it through, but you feel like Abby Tuttle dribbling will might be the answer to solve that zone defense yeah. that CCA's in. Passing through that zone is going to be playing into Clear Creek Amanda's strengths. I think you just got to kind of put your head down and attack it because that's, that's one way you can get by a player that's taller than you. Scrag step back and goes off the foot of Locklear. They want to run the Locklear. Look at that shot. That looks like me in the Y League right there, spotting up from 18 feet away and just burying it. You wish that's how you looked in the Y League. <laughs> uh, that's so pretty. Just nice yeah. touch oh, there man. from Ava Locklear. I mean, if you're if you're looking to teach a mid-range jumper, just play that on a loop. And that's really a lost art. You don't see many shots like that anymore. Everybody wants to take that extra step back. Speaking of which, Jada Pody there from three. Yeah, it's either right on the block or right beyond the arc. Getting a 15-12 footer is a beautiful thing. Shot blocked from behind by Schultz. Cody wanted the ball down the court, but instead they go to Schultz the other way. Might have been tough to sneak that ball in that tiny window. Tuttle. A little skip pass down there to Dillinger. They nice. free up Schultz for three. And she can't get it to fall one and done. Lauer with a board. That was a great extra pass by Dillinger. The closeout was quick in the corner. Just couldn't quite get the three. Locklear, the spot up three is no good. Dillinger clears the board for the Comets. Long passes right now for the Comets. They've had to slow up things offensively a little bit. Dillinger from the corner. No good again. One and done. Locklear. She goes coast to coast, up and in. Oh, man. She had no fear. Went right at Becca Agard. North Polk wants a timeout to talk things over. We'll take a quick break as well and be back on the IGHSAU Digital Network. At American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Clear Creek Amanda on a run to start the second half. Ava Locklear is up to 14 points. And We've talked a couple times just about the outstanding quarterfinal game that she had oh, man. all across the entire board. Yeah, she she could have gotten a triple-double in steals and, and rebounds and points, assists and rebounds and points. I mean, she, she was just stuffing every stat imaginable minus the turnovers, which is what you want to do. And um, really was the... Uh, you know, catalyst for Clear Creek Amanda to take down uh, the Gilbert Tigers in, uh, in, a, in a great, dominant uh, quarterfinal win. The Clippers trailed by two to start this quarter. They now lead by seven with 2.41 to go in the third. A great start for P.J. Sweeney's team. 14-5 to five start to this third quarter. This defensive adjustment they've made has really made things difficult on North Polk as... Cody dribbles it up off her face. Schultz in the corner, lots of time on the shot clock. There's a good spot to get it to. They gotta somehow find a way to get it through those long arms of Bliss Beck and they try to go down low. Agard back in the game as she lays it in, but the foul is called on the floor. And, and you might you might get used to seeing a 1-3-1 here uh, with the next game coming up as well. Bishop Heelan I know likes to run it a bunch. It's a 
if you can play the 1-3-1 defense well, it has got to be the most dominant defense uh, that any team can play in the sport of basketball. Well, it certainly helps to have 6-2 up at the top <laughs> of the, running the point for it. And Blissbeck has done it perfectly here tonight. Out on the corner, Tuttle for three. She can't get it to fall. Rebound pinballed around, and Agard grabs it. Tuttle again. She can't get that one to fall either, and Locklear clears another rebound for the Clippers. She just got that ball at the apex. I mean, that, that was another textbook rebound right there. You can tell North Polk, they want to get running each time they get a rebound, but Clear Creek Amanda gets back so quick. Yeah, and they're set up in that zone so darn quick too. And a foul going to be whistled on Locklear. Yeah, it's not like they're just, you know, running back and kind of out of system on defense. They're running back, and they are, you know, right away set up in the 1-3-1 as we see uh, the foul against Locklear. Agard can't quite get that free throw to fall. Locklear has followed up her nearly triple-double in that first-round game, now with 14 points and five rebounds so far but just one assist tonight. So obviously Ava's got some things to work on. Yeah. Tongue in cheek, of course. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's having a terrible game here. Only 14 points and five rebounds, man. <laughs> she's got the ball now, whips it all the way over here. I love that pass. Over to Lauer for three, no good. Agar up high to get the rebound. Comet's looking to run Osborne all the way down, blocked by Lauer. Lauer's done a really nice job managing everything here. One of the leading scorers in Class 4A. And then Locklear once again. That is such a tough play after we had gone both ends of the floor in about 20 seconds or so. Locklear just calmly takes it along the baseline says let's let's just put an end to this back and forth here for a moment so many teams right now want to use that baseline as a sixth defender but Locklear took it and muscled her way in to get a great angle to shoot it has an opportunity now to create a three-point play and she does Locklear up to 17 points on the night certainly going to be in contention for talks of the captain of the all-tournament team here in class 4a well, she's already on the all-tournament team. I, <laughs> no I, doubt. I, no doubt about that. Is assuming they can get to Saturday afternoon and make some noise there, I think she'd be a lock for captain of the all-tournament team. Long pass down there, stolen away by Lena Evans, who recently checked into the game in an INT insurance substitution. Clear Creek, Amanda, trying to extend this lead. There's about a six-second differential on the shot clock and game clock. Who else but Locklear got a little bit too far under the basket that time? I didn't quite know where she was at, but uh, if that's the one blemish she's had today, it's, uh, it's been a pretty good day. <laughs> what an outstanding tournament for the senior. Love how she moves with the basketball. Three-point shot on the way, good there, as Kadelka back in the game drops that one through. Five seconds to go for Clear Creek Amanda. They throw it out of bounds. And 3.4 seconds now for North Polk to try to do some work. And they've got the possession arrow in the fourth quarter if they can somehow knock something through now. This is Tuttle for three. No good at the horn. She did not get it off in time. It was waved off. But, boy, that certainly could have changed things if you had three possessions in a row that North Polk scored on after trailing by 10. So we head to the fourth quarter. Clear Creek Amana in the lead by seven. Stick with us for the finish. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. And, and Frank, Frank, when you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? 
Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunkissed Orange, is it true Fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. The Iowa Bankers Association is proud sponsor of the Parade of Champions and the Iowa Student Achievement Award. We'll be back here tomorrow night watching that Parade of Champions and seeing all the names and faces that we've seen over the last year at the IGHSAU State Tournaments. Yeah, it's back in action here at Clear Creek Amana over North Polk, 43-36. And there'll be a travel whistled on Campbell Schultz. One of the most impressive stats that we just talked about in the break, there's only one turnover in that third quarter total after each team was near double digit turnovers in the first half. And with how fast both teams play, sometimes the turnover numbers just get higher because there's more possessions. But credit these teams, they're very intentional with the basketball. Kennedy Stratton in there and there's gonna be a foul whistled on Kadelka. Stratton has been in there running that point guard position for most of the second half for Clear Creek Amana. Yeah, whether it's Kennedy or Kaylee, they've been, been kind of switching them a little bit. Kaylee's been out there most of the time, but uh, they both they both really complement each other well, whichever one's on the floor. First free throw there by Lena Evans, a 77% free throw shooter. It's a back up to an eight point lead. Great box out there by Kadelka. North Polk, certainly no need to panic yet, but you do have to be very efficient with your offensive possessions if you want to get back in this one. Schultz swings it around over to Tuttle. North Polk only plays one senior. She's got the ball right now, Kadelka. Tuttle trying to slice her way through that zone. Kadelka gets fouled, tries to go by Stratton. And that's an okay foul. I mean, Kennedy Stratton just, you know, says, hey, I don't have an angle to guard you. You're not going to be putting up a shot. I'm just going to, you know, reset the defense. It does reset the shot clock, but at this point, that's all right for Clayton. They're, they're fine with that, yeah, taking that's, another that's 30 seconds off the clock. Hody. Long pass out here to Dillinger. They try to swing the ball quick, but Clear Creek Command is so fast to get back in position. It's split seconds. Somebody's not there, and then somebody's there all of a sudden. Same look now down to Tuttle. Her three-point shot no good. Kadelka grabs a rebound, goes up strong, can't get it to fall. Locklear comes through and clears it out. And why that's even a better foul by Kennedy Stratton, that was about a minute possession for North Polk. No points scored. Nothing at all. And they get over the top to Locklear, and she's grabbed from behind. Not sure if they're going to get Tuttle or Kadelka on this one. Thank you, Delta. Yep. That's going to force her out of the game now. Becca Agard back in. Another IMT insurance substitution. Learn how you can be worry-free with IMT at imtins.com. Oh, good look out there for Lauer. She hits it. And we talked about in the commercial break, she's just kind of a quiet leader for Clear Creek Amanda. She's all of a sudden got 14 points and you know, hasn't really broken a sweat, it seems like. One of the leading scorers in Class 4A at just under 18 points per game. Just a sophomore, 5'11 sophomore, Avery Lauer. That's scary. And she was WAMAC Player of the Year in the Western Division this year. A WAMAC conference that sent four teams to the state tournament, by the way. North Polk struggling to put up points against this zone of CCA in the second half. Hody tries to change that, and she does. That's a massive shot. And North Polk's had a few of those here, but they just haven't gotten the one that gets them right back into the game. North Polk fans behind us want some defense. Locklear drives in. That little step through, I love it. She can't get it to fall. Now North Polk back on the attack once more. 
Capote just hit a three a second ago. Schultz wants to get the ball down to the corner, swings it all the way over for Tuttle to go up off the glass and no good, but gets her own board and she's stripped from behind and fouled by Stratton. And I think that's two free throws for Tuttle, it is. Robin, she was just about to bring that up and get into the act of shooting uh, when, when Kennedy Stratton ripped it out of her hands. Faith Sullivan, some more a youth for North Polk set to check in here shortly as Tuttle misses a free throw. She doesn't miss many. She shoots just under 80% from the charity stripe. And I love having Faith Sullivan out here for North Polk. She is such a difference maker when she comes out on the defensive end. Tuttle misses a pair. Wow. Now that's not very often you see something like that happen. Locklear's got a look in her eye. I thought she was ready to take it right at Agard. Stratton slices through, nearly taken away, and it was taken away. Now a scramble on the floor. It comes back into the hands of Evans, and a foul going to be whistled on Tuttle. And three team fouls now in this quarter on North Polk. Three on Clear Creek Amana as well, but this could mean some free throws here later in the quarter. Ooh, tough miss there as Agard comes up with a rebound. Polk doesn't need to hurry quite yet, but they do need to get a basket here. There's a good look for Pody, but can't get it to fall. And then on the rebound, taken away, Tuttle. Sullivan drives in, kicks out in the corner, Schultz for three. And Sullivan, another rebound. There's your difference maker yes. right there, Daniel Versteg. Right off the bench and right into the action. Then gets the ball swiped out of her hand, so no points. A couple different possessions here at an eight-point deficit for North Polk, and they were not able to delve into it any further. Timeout, Clear Creek Amanda will take a quick break too and be back after this on the IGHSAU Digital Network. At American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Big look at Wells Fargo Arena here as we sit in the 4A semifinal, the first of two tonight as Waverly Shell Rock and Sioux City Bishop Helan will battle after this. Try to each get their spot in tomorrow afternoon's 4A state championship game. Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon. I'm, I'm all <laughs> off. This week is all run together right now. The yeah, days sorry. do run together at this tournament. That's when you know you've had some good basketball. That we've had some great yeah. games we've to call had some great games. over the course of this week. 4-12 to go in this one. And Daniel Versteg, right now the Clippers doing what they want to do. Yeah, and that's on both ends of the floor. I mean, they've given up some chances, but even after giving up an offensive rebound, they settle in on the defensive end, and they can test shots. They make life difficult for North Polk. Good defense there by the Comets as Agard is pushed out of bounds, hits the deck hard. Lockler quick to help her up. Didn't, didn't mean to get her nope. that hard. Yeah, and that's that's what the best part about this tournament, too, is the, the girls are in it for the fun. They're, they're here to have fun. They, they don't mean to you know make any enemies down here. That's That shows the sportsmanship of the Iowa girl in full effect. Lockler whistled for her third foul. Tuttle sets up the O. Need to see him attack that spot, and she turns it over that time, and then a foul going to be whistled on Sullivan. She wondered what happened because she got hit in the head, but she got too close <laughs> to Sam Scragg. And she's might have gotten it up in the mouth, and looks like she's going to be okay. I think the worry is cut a lip or something there, but she'll be okay to stay in the game. Now some pressure applied by the Comets. Stratton lobs it over the top down to Beck. 
Back blocked by Agar. Great defense, just straight up and, and made Beck have to shoot into her. So again, Tuttle looking at something up right now, but they got to get through Bliss Beck first, and they've not had a good time doing that. There's some good ball movement, getting it down to Agar. Swing pass over on the far side for three. Shot away off by Schultz. Shot clock did not reset. Now Sullivan for three, and she's fouled. Wow. They'll have a chance to shoot three. And Becca, I don't know if you noticed this through the course of the action, Becca Agar demanded a triple team down on that right block. And, you know, she's no dummy. She knows somebody's open on the outside, and uh, she's, she's got such great vision, just like Bliss Beck does. We talked about that in the first half. And found the open girl, got now North Polk an opportunity to sink some much-needed free throws. Plenty of time left in this one for the Comets. If you're a Clipper fan, the clock can't move fast enough. <laughs> Sullivan calmly hits the first two. She's got one more. Sullivan gets two out of three, but Tuttle hustles and gets the rebound. Huge rebound. North Pole trying to dive into this one a little bit more. Pody. North Polk has had the ball for a long time right now. There's Tuttle, shoots the long three, and gets it! Just a few seconds ago, Clear Creek Amanda led by 11. Now they only lead by three. North Pole on a run right now. Full timeout for the Clippers. We'll be back with a final 246 after this on the IGHSAU Digital Network. At American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. I misspoke heading into the break. That timeout was actually called by North Polk and kind of a big deal right now. They only have one remaining in a three-point ball game with 2.46 to go. And in Iowa high school basketball, the clock doesn't stop in the last minute off made buckets. Right. So that's so, so, that's one of those situations where you do want to keep that timeout in your pocket. And assuming there's a scenario where you, you can't get the ball inbounded for whatever reason, having a timeout to avoid a five-second call is crucial. Uh, Clear Kick Man is in a good spot. They can talk things over. They've got a few opportunities to stop a potential North Polk run here. North Polk sets up their pressure defense in the full court. 94 feet here on the Wells Fargo Arena floor. Lauer calmly dribbles it across the half court. Lauer looking for a cutter, Pody. Moving in on her, hands off to Beck. This is where they want to have the ball. Locklear spins her way in, uses her body so well, and is blocked by Agard. North Polk with a chance to maybe tie it here as we approach the two minute mark. Kadelka was calling for the ball earlier. They got it to her a little bit late, and then a foul whistled as they try to get it to Schultz on the inside. And that is going to be shooting right now for the freshman Schultz. And North Polk's in the bonus now. Clear kick man is not far off. North Polk's got four fouls. Um, both teams have had their struggles with the free throw line. They're both at 62%. This is where you can make your money at the line. The North Polk fans behind us have come alive as Schultz drops that one through. Right at two minutes to go, and we've got a two-point ball game. And just a minute or two ago, <laughs> didn't see this coming. Basketball's such a stupid sport, isn't it? And that's why we love it. As Schultz hits the second as well. We've got a one-point ball oh, game. Oh, man. Strap in, folks. This will be fun. The five seed North Polk, the one seed, Clear Creek Amana. Ava Locklear, who's had just an incredible tournament so far, has the basketball right now. Another timeout for North for Clear Creek Amana this time. 
and they check and they do indeed have a 30 second timeout remaining so we'll keep it right here and this, these North Pole, it hasn't been like it's been this barrage of points. It has been a barrage of points, but it hasn't happened like just that quick barrage. They've done it methodically. Yeah, well, and, and it helped, too. They had that two for three at the line, got the old board, kick out three. But, yeah, like, like you're alluding to, it hasn't been score, turnover, score, turnover. It's been score, stop, score, stop. And that, you know, feels like it takes a lot longer, but it's exactly what North Polk wants. They talk about their defense all the time. It's why they're here at Wells Fargo Arena uh, for the seventh uh, time in school history, and they've got an opportunity to give themselves the ball with a chance to take the lead when they come down the other end. CCA likely drawing something up for Locklear or Lauer. Long pass into Stratton to set things up. This is Kaylee Stratton. And they get it to Lauer right there. Bud foul there, that is just the fourth, that is now the fifth on North Polk. So that will be shots for Stratton. And in this scenario, that's not, that's not the worst foul in the world. You're trying to go for the steal, you're trying to you know, make a play on defense. I like the aggressiveness. Kaylee Stratton steps to the line, 63% free throw shooter. And the senior calmly sinks the first one. Like she's been massive. She came into the tournament averaging three points a game. She's got six here in a state semifinal, and the, the Clippers have needed every single one of her points to relieve some of the pressure off a, a Bliss Beck or, or Locklear or, or Lauer. I just watched P.J. Sweeney sprint down the bench and grab Sam Scragg yes. to get her back in the game right now as the second free throw is missed. North Polk with their first chance to tie it in this second half. Hody with a basketball. Now Tuttle. Talk about Tuttle being the future UNI Panther. She's certainly one that you want to run this play through right now if you're North Polk. She's got it. And Clear Creek Command is all over everything right now. They just shut down the passing lanes. We've got a great view of it right now. Five seconds on the shot clock. Tuttle all the way up with a shot, and she's fouled. With two seconds on the shot clock by Scrag and Tuttle will have a chance to tie it up. Yeah, it has not been the best game for Sam Scrag, and that's that's been tough for Clear Creek Amanda. She's got four fouls. She hasn't scored yet, and she makes her her money on the on the defensive side of the ball. Just hasn't been there tonight. Tuttle misses another free throw. Nearly 80% free throw shooter. She's missed three in a row. And at some of the biggest times of the night. Gets that one, makes it a one point game once again with just over a minute to play. Lauer, certainly capable of taking over this basketball game. Gives it back to Locklear and one more timeout for Clear Creek Amanda. We'll take one more break here in this one. This will be the last time we break away tonight as we bring you the last 57.3 seconds right after this. At American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. There you see fans set up here, ready to go, cheering this one on right now. Clear Creek, a man of the one-point lead. They have clung to this lead in the last couple minutes of this basketball game, Daniel Versteg. Yeah, and they've done it, like you said, very methodically, doing what they do best, and that's defend. They, you know, hold teams to very low scores, they force turnovers, they're, they're playing their brand of basketball and um, it's worked. And now they need to rely on their defense again, which is not the worst thing in the world. Their defense has come to play over the last few minutes. Fans of both teams on their feet right now as Kaylee Stratton takes it out in front of the CCA bench. I would imagine North Polk will play defense right now as Lauer with the basketball, Stratton, not going to foul anybody at this stage of the game. Certainly not. Lena Evans, who checked back into the game during that timeout, back up top to Stratton. Stratton 
all the way in. That's a tough spot for her, and she steps out of bounds. And, and, and like you said, very wise to not foul. Campbell Schultz just said, I'm just going to get in your way. If I foul you, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I'm just going to be a roadblock for you. And, and she forced her all the way to the end line. Abby Tuttle with a six second differential in the shot and game clock. And the clock does not stop on a made bucket here in the final minute like it does at the college level. Down to 19 seconds on the shot clock. Cody. Cody wanted to drive all the way in. They get it down to Tuttle in the corner. The step into it three is way short. Right there for the rebounds. A guard and she couldn't get it to fall on the rebound. Comes out of there to Beck. Strap on the run. Down low. Nice extra pass to Lauer who lays it in with three and a half seconds to go. What a series of events for Clear Creek Amanda when it looked like North Polk had some great opportunities. Man, and that we talked about that at halftime. North Polk had more offensive rebounds than Clear Creek Amanda, but had fewer second chance points. They just have not been able to capitalize the offensive rebounds tonight like Clear Creek Amanda has. And unfortunately, it reared its ugly head here for North Polk. But this one's not over yet. You got three and a half seconds. A long enough pass you can get a pretty good look at a three. It's going to take a quick transition uh, you know, shot, so you're not going to be able to spot up for it necessarily. But this ball game is far from over. And the officials are talking things over. It does not go to half court like it does in other levels. Right. right now they will have to drive the entire, well, it won't be 94 feet because they need a three right now. But right, right. now, if you're CCA, you overplay the three, but don't follow anybody. You're welcome. To drive hands by off. me, but hands off as yep. they're going to have Pody take it out. I would imagine North Polk not being a great three-point shooting team right now. You've got to get the hands in your best shooter, Tuttle. You've got to have Herbie the one that takes this three-point shot. Yeah, if this game was in the first half, I'd say Campbell Schultz needs to take it, but she's missed some threes here. Uh, I think Tuttle's your best bet because right now she's been the most consistent. Tuttle's going to be defended by Lauer on that far side. She's right over in front of the scorer's bench if you're watching right now from up top. Now she cuts across in front of us. She's got the ball. Two seconds and Tuttle is fouled. And that's actually not the that's worst okay. thing in the world. That, yeah, that's okay. I, you know, you give yourself an opportunity here. This is going to be really challenging for North Pole. Very. Uh, the goal here would be to make one miss the other because you can't play the foul game with an, a second and eight tenths left on the board. Agard going to check back in for her rebounding and a huge IMT insurance substitution here at the end of the game. Tuttle back to the free throw line. Got the Rattles first. it in. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the new philosophy in the sport of basketball. If you're up three, your opponent's got the ball, you foul them, put them on the line, make them get two, or, you know, force them to get a rebound. Agard and Kadelka are the two on the block for North Polk right now. Locklear, Beck down there for Clear Creek Amana. Tuttle misses it, but the rebound taken down by Lauer. And Clear Creek Amana is on to the state championship game. That is a happy group of Clippers right there withstanding a valiant effort from the Comets of North Pole. They were undefeated in volleyball, the favorites to win the title, lost in the semifinals. Last year they were here, they lost to North Polk in the quarterfinal round. I can't imagine the sense of relief for this Clear Creek Amanda basketball team to finally get to a championship game like they've been trying to do for so long. Now it's time for North Polk to get their trophy and Clear Creek Amanda to advance themselves. And for that, we'll head over to our public address announcer. In addition to receiving medallions, each participating player will receive a commemorative basketball provided by the Iowa Farm Bureau, proud title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Presenting awards from the IGHSAU are Gene Berger and Gary Ross. Congratulations to head coach Clint Albertson and the Comets from North Polk on an outstanding basketball season.
And now, Ava Locklear will advance her team to the next round on the official bracket at center court. Clear Creek Amanda fans, your team advances to the championship and will play the winner of Sioux City Bishop Helan and Waverly Shell Rock on Saturday, March 2nd at 2.30 p.m. Fans on behalf of the Iowa. Ava Locklear follows up her near triple-double in the first round with 17 points, seven rebounds tonight, an outstanding effort from her as Daniel Versteg North Polk was so close to pulling that upset, but in the end, that undefeated Clear Creek Amanda squad, they've got the athletes to make the plays when they need it. They had just enough, and we talked about it right off the top. Clear Creek Amanda was going to have to rebound to have success. They end up sealing the game with a defensive rebound, putting an end to a great season for North Polk, but like we talked about throughout this broadcast, North Polk's going to be back here. I, I can only imagine the fire that this Comet team, uh, no, you know, no pun intended there, will have coming back here next year with only one senior graduate. I say that, and Kaylee Kadelka is an outstanding senior, but this North Pol Polk squad will be mad and, and vengeful, and they want to come back here and win the whole thing. What a matchup here in the five versus one game. It didn't look like it would be that way midway no. through the third quarter as Clear Creek Amanda got out to an 11 point lead with a fast start to the second half. But in the end, it's CCA with a win, 50 to 48. They will play for a state title Saturday afternoon. On behalf of our color analyst, Daniel Versteg, our producer, Randy, and myself, Andy Pollack, thank you for watching our live coverage of the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network powered by Mid-American Energy.